Hello folks, welcome to Loop Learnings and in this video I'm going to demonstrate something new to uh, all of you that a platform that you might have heard about it or you might have not heard about it but this is going to be alternative to Microsoft Access. I thought we'll make a video and we'll look at how do we utilize something else as alternative to Microsoft Access. It's always a good idea to know some of the alternatives. But before I do that, I would like to announce something. So let me go to my PowerPoint. I would like to announce that I'm working on POS system. There's been a video series that I created a long time ago. And um, I think uh, there's been a lot of demand for that series. And people ask most of the questions. So I thought I'll make a POS system 2.0 with a different user interface and um, we'll put those videos on uh, on the channel in coming days subscribe first hit the bell icon also and then join the channel the reason i say join is because first i'm going to upload the videos for members only so members will get to watch those videos first and then they will be open to the public after uh, some weeks okay so what are we going to do let's say i have this list I have a couple of columns. We'll keep things easy. I have a couple of columns. Title, it's a text type field. Even date, it's a date type field. Host, uh, who's the host? And venue, where this will take place. Now, I can actually go in Microsoft Access, create a couple of tables or maybe one table, and actually copy and paste the entire information in that table. And that should work, definitely. There's no uh, harm in that. But we do have some alternative, which I have used in the past, and I really like them. So instead of Microsoft Access, there is another platform which we can use. And that platform is called Microsoft Lists. I'm sure you must have heard about it. Or if you have not heard about it, then I think this is a really good option as well. So this is a user interface for Microsoft Lists. In the previous days, in a couple of months back, Microsoft announced that Microsoft Lists will be available to anyone who has Microsoft account. It could be um, Microsoft account like your name at live.com, your name at hotmail.com. You can that you can use that email address and you can create uh, Microsoft Lists as well. In the past, Microsoft only gave this option to the business users, people who have business accounts. Only they will have access to Microsoft Lists. But now they have opened it to the general public as well. So I think this is a great alternative to Microsoft Access because this is a web base. You can use it on the computer. You can use it on the uh, mobile phone as well. Now to create new lists, so basically each table in Microsoft Access, we call it create and table. In Microsoft Lists, we will call list, right? So we'll click on create new. And we get a, a pop-up which asks us a couple of things. It asks us to uh, create our own lists using list view, form view. You can actually create form and you can share those forms with other users to collect the information. Uh, gallery view, calendar view, board view. We can create many views. And if you scroll down a little bit, you have import option as well. Let's say I have data in a mix of Excel. I can actually import the entire thing into uh, Microsoft lists and it will save the information or I can actually let me go back I can actually uh, click on create from existing list if you want to explore further you scroll down a little bit you will see a lot of templates created um, and they are prepared by Microsoft so you can use one of those templates as well but if you want to create your own I would suggest you create from start so we'll click on create and we will give name of the list. So let's say it is all about events. So I'll say event management. Okay. And I'll click create. And this is how you can create a list, right? Now, right away, what you will see is a couple of things. Here on this interface, you can see the first column is by default, is called title. Now we can actually rename. If you'll click wherever you'll see this arrow, you can click to see further options as well. We can actually rename, for example, if we'll go to Excel and we can give a rename, we can rename to event name or event title or even title if you want to keep it same. So we will call it event name, right? So we'll say rename it and we'll call it event 
name. Okay, that's really good. We'll save that so you can see it will be changed right here. We can go back. The next one is event date. So I can come here. Anytime you want to add a new column, you click on add column right here on this plus sign and you get a little pop up. It gives you the type of the data. Same like if we'll go here, right? If I, let's, let's say I go to this table and we have the type of data right here, right? Similarly, we get the data type as a pop up window right here. Now, what information we are providing in this column is a date. So let's choose a date and time. I'll click on next. And we will see a little drawer or window on the right side will appear. And in here, it will ask, what is the name of this column? So we'll say event date. And we can say type. If we'll scroll, uh, not scroll, if we'll click, we'll see a bunch of options that we can select. We want to keep it date and time. Include time? No, we don't want. If you want to include time, you can actually include time friendly format. So what do we mean by friendly format? For example, right here, you have date, month, and year, right? Friendly format is 24th November. So we'll leave that. Now, if I will click on more options, and you'll see here required that this column contains information. Same, same here in Microsoft Access. We make it as a required field. So like that, you can see uh, it is required, okay? You can also enforce unique values. Maybe you'll have a situation where you want to have unique information in rows. So you can have that as well, okay? Once I'm happy with it, uh, default value, if you want to choose default value, for example, you know, today's date, whenever a record is created, automatically today's date is uh, selected, you can use that as well. I'm going to keep it blank, okay? So if you're happy with it, we'll click on save and it will add another column. There you go. What about the next column? What do we have? Host. Now, if you will focus, host is having options, for example, manager and director. Is there anyone else? No. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to click on add column, and we have a type of the column called choice. So if you select that, we'll click on next. And again, it will ask the name. So we'll say host. And then in here, you have, again, a couple of options. We have chosen choice, so it is selected. And here, we can provide it, uh, provide the choices. For example, manager, I'll simply copy and paste right here. And director, there you go. Oh, yeah, I can change the color, so it looks nicer, right? And I don't need this uh, third field, so I'm going to delete this third field right here. There you go, OK? You can give option to add the information manually. I would say keep it off. Scroll down. Yeah, it should be dropped on a menu, not a radio button. And I think everything else seems to be okay. So we'll click on save. And we have the host. How about venue? In the venue also, you see two options, HQ and RQ, regional. I think regional headquarter and headquarters, something like that. So we can click on add column. And again, choice, next. And we'll say here, um, venue. Is this the spelling? V-E-N-U-E, -E. yeah, correct. And we'll say HQ, RQ, and we'll delete the extra one. And there you go. Okay, so we can provide this information. Uh, we, we have successfully created the columns. We can click on Add Columns. I just wanted to walk you through the other type of data. So we have text. Of course, we can understand it's a text. We have, we have used choice. We have used date and time. Multiple line of text where you have to ask the user to put everything in detail or something in detail. So that's where multiple lines of text will, appear, uh, will be used. Person. Now, this is really handy, by the way. This will be used especially in the business accounts where you have this Microsoft list set up and all your business users are in the Azure directory. So you can fetch their information by typing their name or email address. So that's where the person field will be used. Number, of course, by num name we can understand. Yes and no also by name we can understand. Hyperlink, if you want to have a link provided in the list, you can also do that. Image, by name we can understand. Lookup, lookup field. Now, another beauty of this Microsoft list is basically you can create relationship. For example, if we'll go here, we'll click on relationship. In Microsoft Access, you have relationship created like this, right? In Microsoft list, you can actually create relationship. You can choose lookup. It will ask you from which table you want to fetch the information or to which table you want to link this table with or list with. 
you can choose those options and you can actually link uh, both tables. If you are interested, let me know. I will show you in the next video. But th that will be depending on how much interest you are. So let me know in the comments below and I will create another video in which we will see how to uh, link to Microsoft Lists and we create a sort of a relational database. It's really handy feature, actually, to be honest. So these are different types of uh, fields I thought I'll show to you. Now we have created a list successfully. It's time to add the records. I can click on Add New and we'll get a nice pop-up uh, window. And we can actually go in the Excel, refer to the record, and we will provide the date. And we'll choose from the drop-down. It's a manager and the venue is HQ. I will click on Save. There you go. The record is added. Or I can actually come here and mass select the records. We'll go to Exit Create. We'll go to Edit, uh, edit Create, sorry. And I'm going to paste right in here. Okay. You can see that both records are added. I can exit. There you go. If I'm happy with it, I can keep adding or I can select in one shot and I can add those uh, records. You can see here right now it's updating. Awesome. Let's select all. All right. And we'll paste right here and we will add all the records. Great. Either you can do in this way or remember in the start in the beginning, I showed you, you have an option called import. You can actually import all the records. Once I'm happy with it, I can exit the grid view. So these are our records. So it looks like Microsoft Access table, but it's a little bit more modern. And especially if you are using business account, to be honest, you can get real benefit out of this Microsoft list. You can connect this list to um, Microsoft's automation uh, called Power Automate. If a record is changed, if somebody has added record, somebody has marked it completed, you can have this automated email notification created as well. I think I'm going to make some more videos about Microsoft list. I'm going to make videos about Power Automate. I think these are also powerful alternative to Microsoft Access. Microsoft Access is great. Definitely, I love it. I still use it for many things, but we can move on to web if it is required by going to Microsoft List. In fact, you can create entire database in Microsoft Lists, and this means the data resides on the uh, web or the cloud, and you can connect Microsoft lists to Microsoft Access. That's the beauty, right? So you can go to external data, new data source, and you see here from online services, and you, here we go, you have the SharePoint list. If you are interested, let me know, and I will create entire database instead of in Microsoft Access, I'll create it in Microsoft lists, and I will link that to Microsoft Access. So you can also achieve that. It's really powerful. I've done it. I know it. It really works smoothly. Okay. So this is how you can create Microsoft lists. To be honest, there are many, many other things I would like to demonstrate. But I want you to tell me whether you're interested in me showing you other great features that the Microsoft lists offer. And it is a great platform to be very honest. But I think in this video, let's leave it to the let's leave it to the basics. I want you to create an account. I want you to create a list and I want you to create or oh, add the data in the list. Once you do that, let me know in the comments below that I've done it. And that will be our stepping stone towards the next video. All right, so let's wrap it up. What we have done is we have created Microsoft. We have we got to know Microsoft lists. We have created a list in the Microsoft and we have created columns and we have migrated the data from Excel to Microsoft lists. And also uh, we have seen that how do we integrate Microsoft lists to Microsoft Access. Of course, all of this I can demonstrate later on. But thanks very much. And before I uh, close the video, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And don't forget to join the channel if you, are, if you want to get early access to the videos on PR system. And by the way, this time I'm going to really upload the entire application, live working application on for you guys especially to the channel members all right so that's about it thank you very much let me know in the comments below what do you think of it and if you like uh, smash the like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever i upload a new video please do not forget to subscribe to the channel 
Thank you so much and I will see you again.